Locked on Islanders here. Another rough outing for this team on Saturday in Florida. They're off to an 0-2 start. I'll tell you why it's too soon to panic and share some good news about the contracts of the top two defensemen on this Islanders team. All that plus our Islanders birthday of the day and a whole lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody. Happy Monday to you all. I hope everybody had a good weekend. Better weekend than our New York Islanders had. They got off to another disappointing performance. And uh, look, nobody wants to be 0-2. We all know that. But I'm going to tell you that even though there are some disappointing aspects of this team had, including the 5-1 loss in it's too soon. We'll go over some key takeaways from that game uh, on today's show. We'll also discuss the new contract that was signed last week uh, by With I get incredible. I now have our Islanders Islanders history was one year of the NHL. We've got a whole lot more. Oh, so we lock on Islanders podcast. And thanks for making Locked On listen every. Remember, we're free and available on all platforms and now also available on YouTube as well. So log on to YouTube and just, uh, you know, search for Locked On Islanders. And if you subscribe, you'll get every episode as they go live. If you've got something Islanders related on your mind, you have a question, a comment, a topic you'd like us to talk about, send us an email at LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. If you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we talk about whatever it is that's on your mind. You can follow the show on Twitter at LockedOnIsles, and you can follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at IceWars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest news, notes, and happenings concerning your New York Islanders. So, 5-1, the game we wanted uh, in Florida, and, and, you know, expect more from the team than what we've been seeing. And I wanted to, you know, go over some key takeaways from this game. If, if it, it really is the most that the Islanders are not playing hockey. And look, both the Carolina Hurricane and the Florida Panthers are good hockey teams. But, but you know, this is an Islanders team with aspirations. You've got to you you beat all teams all the time. But you've got to have performance against them them and right now just isn't happening and disturbing thing is that the islanders are not playing the hockey that made them great and that is strong strong play in your own strong strong goaltending and timely goals and we're just not getting that right now one concern that i have seen on islanders twitter and you know after watching saturday's game Zdeno Chara, 44 years old, as we've mentioned on the show, minus four in this game against the Florida Their team. Gives up five goals and one defenseman is a four. That's not a good performance by any stretch of the imagination. Now, look, Zdeno Chara has been playing in this league longer than 
a lot of listeners to this podcast have even been alive. Zadeh Chara is a smart, heady veteran, and I'm not worried long term about his ability to play better than he has in the first couple of games. But Islanders do need him to play better. Chara looks a step slow. And if you remember, a breakaway goal that was scored very late in the second period by the Florida Panthers. Uh, you know, that one was particularly frustrating to me because, you you know, Chara was caught out of position and the pass just got, and Anthony Duclair ends up putting uh, that breakaway goal. Nice pass by McKinney. We got to give him that. But you don't want to leg play behind you and have that big way charted on that play. And no disappointing to see a, a talented defenseman like Z got on like that and give up a breakaway goal. Trust me, a veteran like Zidane Chara has to make a just new team and a new system and new teammates, and he'll do that. So. In my mind, yes, it's a disappointing start. Zidane Chara not blaming the loss exclusively on him. I'm not. But he needs to play better, and I'm confident still that he will. The B&B line, usually one of the Islanders' most consistent lines. Minus three, each of them in this game, and none of them put any points on the board and you know that other than Brock Nelson's strong performance in the faceoff circle very disappointing that that line was on the ice for so many goals given up and usually again they're good at possessing the puck at moving the puck at that transition game we didn't see it yet and you know not a good sign meanwhile the other thing that has to be a little bit of a concern especially with uh, Simeon Varlama still unavailable, Ilya Sorokin, again, not blaming Ilya Sorokin and saying he is fully responsible for this Islanders loss. He's not, not even close. But the Islanders need Ilya Sorokin to play better. Now, look, the breakaway can't say that was his fault. There weren't, in the first two games, very many soft, where you say, oh, you know, that that one was one has 99.9% of the time and he just flubbed it. No, there have been too many quality scoring chances allowed by this Islanders defense, and that's atypical of this hockey team. But at the same time, you know, we talk about timely saves, emotional saves, saves that, that help bail your team out of a jam when your players the Islanders aren't getting that as of right now from uh, uh, Ilya so they'll need to do a better job assuming they Simeon Malov is still near injury. But you gotta hope that Sorokin has been able to get some positions until on the road. They need to get the Needs more. Or it's
I don't think he knew at this point. And yeah, I'll say before he was give you more. I'll name it Kenny Bassett mode. And I think he'll start to do that in Chicago. We have got a lot of show, including the Green Pool I now have, and we'll talk plus Islanders on the Locked On Islanders podcast. Does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, and you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes, no need to buy another device ever again, and the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter, and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required content varies by package. And thanks for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. So we didn't get a chance. The Islanders Who are the founding this year? Who twenty twenty relic? Reasonable fair I mean, seven. Block a six point one function AAV or, or average cap hit. Let's let's say that. That means that your top tier I think, think about that. About that, Eric Carlson earning a million dollars a year on his own. Eleven point four million dollars a year on their own, and you are fat that a deal like this. If this is a lengthy extension, a seven year extension, by a year four or five, assuming the salary cap needs to go another disaster like we did with COVID, suddenly is making a lot less it's better and better. Let's say they're no longer elite defensemen. By then, these cap hits will probably still be 
fair, and team. From the middle out, from the goal out. So you got your goals of the key, and look at how deep they are in Varlamov and Sorokin, and a little better in insurance in Snyder. You got Pelican Ulak locked for their primes, and maybe a year or two beyond their primes, and then her position right now. Keeping doing it to players but I'm not hurting so if, if you ask me. And year from now, three years from now, you will be thinking about the value of the pilot. So, no on this deal. The situation, look, it, it, it great. And the only sort of fiat that gives a little bit more insurance is this deal, no trade. Clause and in the last, last three, there's a modified no trade clause. And you don't want. You know, you want to make him feel secure and the island. No, you know. He is he, you know, not only Pay, but not over secure and that additional attack five years think ten years or uh, this was a few real class team half runners. So, I'm happy to tell you not Ryan Position. Islanders' birthday, the a little bit going around. I want to mention it before I really talk about it. Uh, it, it hope it'll update itself in your future, so make sure you stick around for that. Today's show is brought to you by Built Bar. You know, so many delicious flavors, there really is something to for. For everyone, and when you talk to a built bar, they're definitely passionate about their favorites, and it's easy to tell why. Listen to these great flavors strawberry, coconut, mint brownie, double chocolate, orange, cookies and cream, and my personal favorite, the salted caramel. Sweet and salty at the same time. I just love it. And if you haven't tried all the flavors, you can order 
a mixed box where they'll send you to each of the nine permanent flavors so you can determine which ones you like the best. And not only are Built Bar flavors the best tasting, they're healthy too. Check out macros. Each bar has between 17 and 18 grams of protein, just 130 to 180 calories, four or five grams of sugar, or five grams of net carbs. Amazing flavors, all tasty, all healthy. And Built Bar is the official protein of the U.S. field team. Go to built.com, use the promo code LOCK15, you'll get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Time now for our under day of the day. We are one day late on this one, but I want to wish a very happy 65th birthday. Hard to believe that. 65th birthday to former Islanders defenseman Ken Morrow. Morrow, a uh, native of Flint, Michigan, drafted by the Islanders in the fourth round back in 1976, was also drafted by the New England Whalers of the WHA uh, in the eighth round that same year, played four years at Bowling Green, and then was a member of the Miracle on Ice 1980 U.S. Olympic team. And after winning the goal at Lake Placid, late in the season, Kenny Morrow joined the New York Islanders. And in February of 1980, he wins a gold medal in what was probably the greatest sports moment of the century uh, in America. And then in May of that year, Kenny Morrow wins the Stanley Cup. And Morrow on to win four Stanley Cups with the New York Islanders. And the addition of Ken Morrow on defense and Butch Goring, who was acquired at the trade deadline in 1980, on offense, solidified a great Islanders team into a team that would become dynasty. And, you know, you look at Ken Morrow, defense was his thing. He was not a great offensive player, but he was clutch. And listen to this. Morrow played with the Islanders through the 1988-89 season when injuries cut his career short. In 550 career NHL games, Ken Morrow scored 17 goals and 105 points. Okay? In 127 playoff games, he scored 11 goals and 33 points. So 17 goals in 550 regular season games, 11 goals in 127 playoff games. Ken Morrow didn't score often. He did. It mattered. And obviously his most fickle, the overtime game winner, or game five of the uh, best of five playoff series against the Rangers. We did that last year when Kenny Morrow saw his birthday of the day. So we're going to go to a different playoff game-winning overtime goal for Kenny Morrow. April 11th, 1980, Islanders and Kings at the Forum in Inglewood. Game number three of this series with the series all tied 1-1. The Kings won game two to send it back to L.A. Uh, all, all even at one. And the Kings off to a quick start. Mark Hardy, his first of the playoffs, unassisted, just a minute and a half into the game. He beats Billy and uh, trailed one nothing. Mario Lazard was the goaltender for the Kings. And this was a physical, physical contest. But ex-Islander Dave Lewis called for hooking. Bob Bourne cashes in on the power play. His second of the playoffs, Dennis Potvin, the only assist at 347. We're tied 1-1. But then the Kings get another playoff opportunity. Clark Gillies off for high sticking. Charlie Simmer of the Triple Crown line. He gets his first of the playoffs from Mark Hardy and Marcel Dion at 642. Kings led 2-1. After the first period. In the second period, LA extends their lead. Simmer again, his second from Dave Taylor and Marcel Dion. There's your triple crown line at 1047. Three to one Kings after 40 minutes. But the Islanders come back. Clark Gillies, his first of the playoffs from Butch Goring and Dwayne Sutter at 322. 
makes it a one-goal game. And then Goring, his first of the playoffs from Dennis Potvan at 6.34, which tied, all tied, 3-3, and we go into overtime. And who gets the game-winning goal? Ken Morrow, his first of the playoffs. It's unassisted. There was a, a crowd in front, and the puck deflected. A shot from the point by Morrow deflected in off one. One of the defensemen in front of the goal, beating Mario Lazar. The Islanders skate away with a 4-3 overtime win. They would win game four the next night in L.A., 6 to nothing to eliminate the Kings and begin their road to their first ever Stanley Cup. So first career play, first overtime game winner for Kenny Morrow. He is 65 years old yesterday, uh, Sunday, Happy birthday to Kenny Morrow. He's been working for the Islanders organization as a scout. We'll talk about a uh, nice guy. Had the uh, pleasure of interviewing him for my book, uh, Ice Wars. So uh, Kenny Morrow, great guy and a great defenseman for the Islanders. We wish him a very happy birthday. He is our Islanders birthday of the day. Wanted to address that rumor before we leave. Something going around Twitter, unconfirmed, but just wanted to mention it that maybe the UBS arena won't be able to open on time, may have to push it back a couple of weeks. Again, no verification on this, and Twitter isn't always the most accurate place. We're supposed to get some more confirmation on that early this week, and as soon as we do, I'll tweet it out, and I will also deal with it on the show once news does become official. I hope it's not true, but that was one of the rumors going around on Twitter. So uh, again, hopefully it is not going to be an issue. Again, for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day, we'll be back tomorrow to preview the game against the Blackhawks on Tuesday and discuss how the Islanders can right the ship. Now, make your second listen Locked On Fantasy Hockey. Scott, host Scott Cullen leans on his decades of fantasy hockey insight and experience every day to help you be the expert of your fantasy league. It's free and available on all platforms. That's going to do it for today's episode of the Podcast. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.